This story is about personal success and it's about team success. And one, one cannot exist without the other. We become a little less defined by our limitations and a little more defined by our possibilities. Ordinary people achieving extraordinary results. I was invited in to speak to a group of little kids one day into an elementary school. And they were real little, you know, they were just seven, eight years old. And there they were, they were all sitting on the floor in front of me, getting ready to hear the big story. And you, can't, you can imagine the anticipation that these kids have been experiencing. Their teachers have been hyping them up. And so I finally get there, and I'm, I'm just putting up the first couple slides on the screen. And one little guy's hand shoots up above his head, and he says, Hey, when's the mountain climber coming to talk to us? <laughs> I said, well, I am the mountain climber. He said, no, you're not. You're just an ordinary girl. <laughs> what this story is really about is about ordinary people achieving extraordinary results. And this is about the extraordinary potential that exists within all of us. You may not be crazy enough to want to go out and climb a mountain, but it's about the fight and about the power and about the potential that exists within all of us. I went to Everest for two reasons. One is Everest is considered, especially when I climbed it in the mid-80s, the grand arena, the main event. And for me, I found the notion of performing better than I ever had having to be stronger physically and mental than I ever had to get near the summit, very, very compelling. And the other reason I went to Everest was because of this man here, a man by the name of Jim Elzinga. Jim Elzinga was the leader and the visionary of this climb to Everest. Jim had this very, very uh, bold vision to climb the mountain by a route that had never been climbed before in its entirety, a very difficult route to climb it with less resources, a much smaller team, without Sherpas, and in less time, and to do it better. Does that sound familiar to you? <laughs> the idea was not just to bag the summit, to bag the peak, but it was to do it in great style, to do it where success would hinge totally on, on great teamwork and also very, very good individual extraordinary individual performance and great leadership. The only constant on this mountain is change and adversity. Every new altitude you gain, new camp you gain, presents an increasingly more demanding set of, of variables, of factors to have to deal with, to have to juggle. Climbing is not the most difficult aspect to climb this mountain, it is the environment. It is living and, and, and trying to perform in this environment of adversity. And we're working with deadlines. We're working with work quotas. We have only 13 people that carry over two tons of equipment up onto this mountain. That means that every man, every person, is going to have to be carrying or performing pretty steadily, pretty constantly. The biggest challenge on this mountain for me and the one that becomes most important is the goal of having to, to thrive daily. It's not about working harder. It's not about working longer. It's not about carrying more. Thriving instead is about using what you do have real well. So here's one of our challenges, dehydration. Now, if you don't drink enough water, it can lead to pretty serious consequences in a very short time. So you drink a lot of water. I drink about six to eight liters of water a day. It's a lot of water. We're not talking glasses. We're talking like quarts of water. And the time when I drink that water is in the morning and the evening when I have access to these stoves that, of course, we can only burn in the shelter of our tent. Well, I don't know about you, but when I drink four quarts of water at night, I got to get up more than once. You know what 40 below feels like? It's cold out there. 
And there's not a lot of room on that little ice platform that's 5,000 feet off the deck to dance around with your slippers on either. And what's more is you notice how inconvenient it is to be a member of the female gender at this time. <laughs> there's all kinds of things about this experience or about these challenges that kind of throws you into this survival mode or this reaction mode. What I've got to tell myself when I'm right on the edge there, I've got to work on telling myself all the time is better is possible. And I came up with this great solution. We were issued two water bottles each at the beginning of the trip, both, both identical looking, both identical in appearance, both a, a, a quart or a liter in capacity. And the first step to this solution was to mark one bottle very differently from the other. <laughs> and now keep in mind that you sh you're in very close quarters with, the, with your teammates in the tent in the evening. I may be with one or two other people, sandwiched sometimes in the middle or on the side. Well, I could master this whole little challenge, not only inside the comfort of my tent, but inside my sleeping bag, and nobody even knew what I was doing. Talk about pride in personal performance, let me tell you. <laughs>